Hi everyone, it's FSKH Fashion Drawing Tutorials and in this tutorial we're going to render three looks from Marc Jacobs Spring 2019 collection. So I prepared three poses, you can draw something similar. Um, just pay attention to location of your crotch, of your legs in relation to your head. So everything is like S shaped. Or you can draw this closing as a practice on any croquis that you have. So I start from the belt part and I draw your sleeve. Pay attention how I draw the sleeve. First I draw the inner line and then I draw the line that goes on your shoulder. So they're just a bit further behind your neck. And the sleeve must, you know, continue on the other side. So just try to, you know, to check if, if you go behind your neck that, um, that is on one level. So next, uh, you see that I added some volume above her belt, since your coat is, you know, they're gathered because of the belt. And here I'm drawing the ellipse. Whenever I draw any sort of skirt or hemline, I draw the ellipse so it can guide the, the line, the hemline. So even if I have some folds, I try more or less follow the shape of that ellipse because uh, the fabric is surrounding your legs and we need to show that. Mm, so adding some wrinkles at your belt. So next here some details of your sleeve and again it's much tighter over there so I have some folds. We have some fabric gathering at the elbow part and uh, here. As you can see I didn't start your sleeves on your shoulder. I did it a bit lower because, uh, because it's a bit oversized. So she has some mesh on her head and I just made this hole because she's drinking her cola. And uh, I drew a cylinder for her back. So. Uh, kind of a circle and diagonal line. And then it's time to outline everything. So I'm using fine line pen and just uh, working in the same way as I did before. Just try to make loose and very, you know, like faster lines. Let your fast movements create something more dynamic instead of drawing slowly and making boring lines try to uh, make it a bit faster and it will look more professional All right, so I erased the pencil. Now I'm using sandstone, which is a uh, light brown, and I'm coloring the whole coat. So it's a trench coat, and it will have um, a bit stronger shadows. So that's why I'm not applying shadows first. If it was a wool coat, which has very soft shadows, I would add first shadows, 
and then make like one layer of markers so the shadows are very subtle but in this case it's a bit different all right so uh, now i'm applying tan color for your skin just showing all the strong shadows and then i added satin and now the last step is to add um, pencil strokes i somehow my camera didn't uh, shoot on the other girl you will see how i'm coloring the skin if you want to see how i color skin and you don't know then you can go to the second girl in the same video and just check it out so now i'm using warm gray 3 for the mesh i'm just coloring everything and it's quite dark so it works for dark nylon for dark mesh which is still uh, translucent but yeah so now i'm using fine line pen and making this circular movement uh, i'm partially coloring your necklace and your earrings you can see there are tiny white spots still left and then i'm using correction pen to to show the highlights more in the center in the front and less at the back so the coat is already dry so I'm not, now i'm going to apply some shadows i'm starting with sandstone the same color and just uh, showing some uh, some depression of the fabric here and there because usually trench coat is a bit hard to to iron it because it has a special coating on the surface which doesn't let uh, to iron it at high temperature so this always has wrinkles now i'm using warm gray 3 the same warm gray that i used for your for your mesh and adding shadows as you can see i'm adding shadows on the sides inside of the wrinkles and you can see that the wrinkles are guided by that uh, wavy outline whenever we have some wave on the fabric there we have some wrinkle and whenever we have overlapping for example the collar and lapel is on the top of the bodies so below that collar and lapel we add some shadows so just trying to follow all this uh, relief of the fabric And whenever we have a thread line, I'm adding this like tiny spots. More of the shadows and wrinkles at the bottom. So I really want to make the bottom be darker. Here we have overlapping two, two sides of the coat. And usually when marker is dry, they become a bit lighter. So in the beginning it might look a bit too dark, but as it dries it looks okay. So some extra shadows with additional layer, which makes marker even darker. I add more shadows whenever there, I think, should be darker, like inside of your sleeves, between bodies and sleeves, under your belt, everywhere. Maybe more on the sides. So next I want to show the thread line itself with a fine line pen. Um, so on your sleeves and lapel. And don't forget about the lower part. So the bottom, which is not visible right now. Now I'm using charcoal pencil 
and everywhere where I didn't add any shadows, so light parts left, everywhere I'm adding uh, white pencil. What is good about charcoal pencil that um, you can smudge it a bit and it becomes softer and it just has its own this special effect that I really love. So next buttons, try to locate them uh, at the same distance. I'm coloring buttons with black marker. And uh, with a black pencil, I'm adding even stronger shadows. So you remember where we added extra shadows inside of the uh, folds, inside of any really deep wrinkles on the overlapping, when we have overlapping details. So on the, the top uh, object, I'm adding shadows. And next with white ink gel pen, I'm adding some diagonal tiny strokes everywhere uh, between edge and thread line and then adding these strokes on two sides of the button to show the reflection of light. So again, many, many tiny diagonal strokes. And continue working with black pencil. Sometimes really showing strokes makes it look more, you know, again, artistic, I think. So um, add some really handmade touch. So more of a warm gray. You can actually work with several warm grays. Warm gray 3, warm gray 4, even warm gray 5, depending on how deep you want to have those shadows. So while everything is drying, let's work with girl number two. I'm drawing her belt part, two curved lines and uh, one thinner stripe uh, inside. So she has quite wide trousers. Shape is a bit like a lantern. So it's uh, wide in the middle and um, you can see that on the top I'm not adding volume straight from her belt part because the trousers are resting on her hips. They are flat, uh, close to the body there, and then they are widening below her hips. So I'm adding some uh, folds closer to the hemline. And once I'm happy with the shape of her trousers, I'm outlining everything. has some ruffles over here and uh, well basically I'm drawing a wave and then the sides of every elevation I'm just connecting with your neck. And the third layer. So once you finish drawing flounces, you use your fine line pen to, to outline all the details. And then erase everything. We are ready for actually fabric rendering. I'm using warm gray 5 and I'm coloring everything with it. All, I mean everything, the trousers. So next I'm using black marker and uh, here you can see all these uh, folds they look a bit strange when you color with black 
But why I'm doing that? Because so very soon I'm going to cover everything with glitter and it won't be that visible. So for myself now, I really want to see where is the end of the fold, uh, where is the top of it. So I put sandpaper, just regular sandpaper for um, renovation of the house. So now I'm using yellow and orange pencils together, just, you know, to make a variation of color. And uh, I'm also using white pencil just in the middle to show the reflection of light. Next, take a correction pen and add uh, highlights just in the middle of the area that we color it with white. And basically the center of the belt, the center of every fold that we have. So yeah, mostly the white area, but also add a little bit of glitter on the yellow part as well. So adding a bit of um, reddish brown, you can use chestnut or walnut marker if you use pro markers. And more of orange and yellow pencil, more of the glitter with correction pen. I'm adding a bit of yellow marker on the top of already dry correction pen. So next I'm using Cerise color of pro marker, which looks just like this to color your ruffles. So next I'm using hot pink and showing all this gathering of fabric around her neck and uh, they, the directionality is toward the outline. I'm adding shadows whenever the wave goes down, so it's uh, bottom of the fold. I'm adding more shadows under the, you know, that you, you see the arc that is made with the fold, so just below on the other layer, showing the thread line on the edges. Okay, more of the highlights. I just feel like I want uh, more of the shine. Next, I'm using cardinal red. You can use burgundy, any of these will work. It's just a bit darker value of red to add uh, deeper shadows and maybe make a variation in the wrinkles. So next, uh, with a pink fine line pen, I'm again showing the thread line and a bit of dark brown. And again, I'm using charcoal pencil, adding highlights, a bit pink on her, like the middle part of her belt. 
more of the highlights. I want also to add a bit of white on her, um, on her ruffles. And uh, some, again, reddish brown pencil to show those lines. So those lines are actually in some ways a pleating. It resembles the lines that we usually see on the petals. So it's uh, really beautiful. hairline now i'm showing the your hairstyle she's going to have a mesh on the top as well so now let's get rid of of the pencil and i'm coloring your hair with a warm gray a bit of sandstone and before the warm gray was three and now it's five dark one so adding it on the edge and now you can see the way that I color skin. I start from the dark color. So you can use tan. Next, I'm using dusky pink. Actually, in this case, I'm going to use several markers for her skin, just like paints here. Yeah. Whenever you're confident, you start using more and more of the colors. Now I'm coloring everything with satin. It's already third marker, the lighter one. And now I'm adding coral just to make it a bit reddish to show that it's kind of a fresh tan. Okay, and last step is a purple pencil to add additional deeper shadows and show the details whenever I, uh, I need them. Now it's time for a mesh. I'm using a pink fine line pen. It's really good uh, to start collecting these fine line pens. There is one by Stadler and uh, other brands, uh, also Copic. Uh, that are useful for these small details uh, using a bit darker one to show some shading and using the same light pink for the mesh on her face and then on her hair because markers are quite uh, have quite wide nib and it's hard to show the details i added some dots on her mesh and a bit of white ink gel pen i want to show the highlights on her hair and on her nose and chin dark uh, you can use black pencil for the shadows again under your under each layer especially when there is this R kind of under the folds on your hair whenever you feel that there is lack of contrast using warm gray for adding more of the shadows because there are some first of all we have dark hair and a lot of overlap of the fabric on the top so adding black pencil if you remember especially on the stockings when there is a dark nylon on the sides it's, it's really i mean where the fabric is less tight it's really dark so the same is here so it's tight on her face and face is light itself i'm adding a highlights with a charcoal pencil and here i'm even adding some black on the top and don't be afraid like even if you spoil something you might find the way to improve it and look as if it's supposed to be like that and more you draw, more you confident with uh, some risky actions. Well, we
So next I'm using Warm Grey 3 for extra shadows, coloring your top and uh, with black I'm coloring your belt and as you can see on your top I colored uh, it partially just to show the lace part. For your back I'm leaving some path of light on colors. I'm spreading black on plastic surface which is my palette, you can use anything solid and using blender, mixing it with black and just coloring on the sides of that highlighted part so adding a thread line with white ink pen refining the outline. Next I want to add just a bit of brown to her coat, maybe even use some tan color. So as that you can add extra shadows and just add some different tone for the shadows or highlights. Sometimes it's really cool when even white clothing is reflecting a bit of uh, maybe lilac or lavender instead of just having gray shadows and So extra shadows on your body and now coloring your top with uh, warm gray 3 and adding some lace with black fine liner, not drawing anything specific actually, just scribbling. And in the same way as I worked with the body, I add shadows with tan, color everything with uh, dusky pink or setting, and then color everything with warm gray 3 or warm gray 4, depending on how dark you want your stockings to be. So um, whenever we have stockings, it's better to have higher contrast I'm adding extra shadows on the sides. So I'm using black pencil. Uh, highlights with charcoal pencil. And using black marker. Uh, leaving just some highlights, just a bit of them. And using warm gray 4 for the inner part of your trench coat. A bit black, just deep inside. And uh, maybe a bit of coral even, or tan, showing the thread line. So uh, we are almost done with these two models. I'm drawing the details of her shoes, the model number two. And the second shoe, this is sort of a bow and uh, the rest of your shoe. After you finish, outline everything and erase the pencil. So now I'm using some brown and then orange. You can use mandarin or pumpkin, any like a bit lighter orange. And then a bit of shadows with black or warm gray 5 and black pencil. Baby, 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 baby. 
Let's draw the soles of your shoes with a fine line pen. Now I'm using cacao color for your stockings or socks that have some sparkles. Uh, so I'm showing shadows with that and the rest I'm coloring with, uh, you can use tan or coral, both work or sun kissed, anything that is a bit reddish, brown, but lighter. With white and gel pen, I showed the highlights on your shoes, added shadows with black pencil and adding sparkle with white and gel pen. So that's it, that was uh, a bit fast, but we tried to cover two looks in one tutorial. So that's how it looks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please share your questions and suggestions. Subscribe to our Sketcher channel for more tutorials and see you very soon.